Hello and welcome to another episode of Revved Up with Mike, and as promised, I'm bringing you back the 2004 Honda VFR 800, except you guys can tell it looks a little different, right? Yeah, that's right. This was formerly that matte black VFR that I traded my Buell for it. As you can see now, it is quite different. It's almost spot on, but we do have a few small little issues that we're going to have to take care of. So, first thing you're going to notice right out right off the bat is, is the fairing. Where did I get the fairing? I got the fairing on Amazon for less than $450. That's right, I'll leave a link in the description below. But before you hit that link, make sure you get all the details on this fairing first. Because there is some small problems with it. But, it does look good. It really does look good. We have this beautiful sparkle blue metallic paint job on here with three coats of clear coat it looks really really good we have the proper stripes and they're painted on not decals so that's right painted on and what do you get for 450 dollars well you get the tailpiece you get the solo seat you get a tank cover you get both sides of the fairings the centerpiece that connects them your front fender your front cowl you even get all the dash pieces of the dashboard and all the surrounds that go with everything it is a nice kit. It comes with a bolt kit. Now the bolt kit is a little le uh, lightweight compared to the original, but they screw it nice, and as long as you're not over tightening anything, it's going to work out fine for you. So that's pretty cool. We did a full tune-up on this bike. New plugs, new coils. Uh, we flushed all the coolant out of it. Put new coolant in. We did. We flushed the brake fluid, the clutch fluid. Everything's synthetic now. Uh, the motor oil is now Redline 10W40, and. Um, the air box, well, let's just say the air cleaner had never been changed in this bike. I believe it's the original air cleaner from this bike when this bike was new in 2004. It was clogged solid, and I believe that was the issue we were having with the stall out coming off idle um, or coming off throttle coming to a stop. The bike would suddenly just die, boom, randomly. And I believe a lot of that had to do with the air. So I think we got that all fixed. Um, we're going to be doing new tires on this bike also soon but as you can see it looks fantastic but how does it run i don't know we haven't really took it on that test drive yet i'm going to take you guys along for that ride today we have added the emblems on the side of this bike to give it a little more modern look we have wings on the way and if you notice on the other side we are still missing that cover for the battery box and that's going to be taken care of soon that should be here today as a matter of fact got that through parts zilla for around twenty dollars but another $20, $25 to ship it. So shipping was pretty expensive on it, but it's coming. And we also have a brand new X-Ring gold chain that will be going on this bike also. So we're really doing everything to this bike to restore it to fantastic condition. Now there's an issue with the tank cover. It does look really good. It is a fantastic looking cover. The paint job is super nice on it, although it was molded a bit small. Let me elaborate on that. So it fit, and it fit very, very snug. So snug, in fact. And it's got mounting points, or your factory mounting points on your seat. Two bolts, and two bolts simply slip, slips over your stock tank. And as you know, we had a dent in our stock, stock tank. So this was really the route to go until we can find an actual anniversary tank for this bike. So it cracked on the bottom under the seat here. And I'm going to put a picture up here of exactly what happened. And, I'm getting hold of the manufacturer. Hopefully they can do something. Ship me out another one that hopefully fits a little bit better and doesn't have that little bit of a flaw. But I'll tell you the paint job on this plastic is amazing. And it's flexible too. It's, got, it's a nice flexible ABS. Putting the tail section on was um, a breeze bending it out to put it around where we needed to go. But I will tell you, if you're going to change your fairings on your bike, plan on taking all day to do it properly test fit make sure everything's going to line up make sure that your mounting points are not bent or damaged because well if they were bent or damaged on your originals this stuff's not going to line up so what i had to do on my mounting points was actually bend the tabs back to their original positions because all of the holes in the lineup points on this fairing are where they should be on an original so all the mounting points were the same as a matter of fact in the front here where the on down below where we the fairings connect together the piece in the middle that meets them together joins the two sides 
that's the factory one that I use with that, and they lined up beautifully. Um, the dashboard on this thing is just like the factory one. I couldn't believe it. It looks fantastic, and they even send you a windscreen with it. It's not on the bike right now. We're still using the zero gravity, but a very nice smoke windscreen and your solo seat and the tank protector here. You get it all for around 450 bucks. So this bike has really come a long ways since I first got it, since I, since I traded my beautiful Buell XB9R for this bike. A lot of people thought I was nuts, but I think you see where I'm going now. We have all new brake pads on it. As you can see, there's no grease anywhere. I attacked this thing with degreaser and a toothbrush. And the best degreaser you could find is not at your hardware store or your parts store. No, it's at your grocery store. Get yourself some Dawn Spray Dish Soap. That's right. That stuff attacks grease aggressively and you can rinse it off, rinse it clear, scrub it with a toothbrush, do it again, do whatever you need to do, and you're not getting any chemical burns or anything like that. It works fantastic. But as you can see, this bike does look fantastic, right? Is it just me? Am I biased? I don't know. Another thing I have to do with this bike is get the original mirrors on here, or at least something that looks a little cooler. These ones have the turn signals in the signal lights, although they're not hooked up, and they won't be because your mounting points are a little bit too big right here. I th like I prefer things that look a little bit more factory, so we're going to do that. But without any further ado, let's get on this bike, take it for a ride, and really see if that clean air box and the tune-up and the fluid changes really made any difference in power. Um, because I don't think we're going to have any stalling issues. But if I do, you're going to be the first ones to know because you're going to be there with me. All right, let's get on that bike and check it out. Okay, we just started her up. She's coming up to temperature, and we're going to take this for its first first real ride. Oh yeah. Oh, she's sounds really good. Sounds better with that air box than one little one more hole. Well, clean air filter for one. Man, what a difference. I tell you, I'm gonna tell you already, it's just way smooth. It was smooth before. I mean, these things run um, like Swiss watches when they're on, but this is even more on so than it was before. It's smoother. Um, there's no lack in throttle response, just even just cruising. It's right there, which is really cool. If you guys aren't familiar, they rate these things at about 110 horsepower. A little over 100 at the wheel. But they're not too shabby. They're not leader bike, but they're not too shabby. Yeah, she goes pretty good now. First day with this new truck or what? Damn, that car just almost got hit head on. All right, guys, final thoughts on this fairing. Why don't you drop it in the comment section below what you think. Is this fairing kit worth 450 bucks? Um, in my opinion, all day long it is. Um, uh, was it was it a good trade, trading the Buell for a VFR? I think so. Um, dependability alone. And um, it's just a bigger bike. It's smoother. It's more. It's more my my uh, style. You know what I mean? Um, like I said, I'm a bigger guy, so this bike fits me a lot better than that little Buell. But it's this thing is. You really want to keep it in that VTEC zone all day long. And I'm gonna. Why we're on the subject of VTEC? I'm going to give you guys my impressions of VTEC. So this is a V4. So of course on a V-twin, people say you don't have a power band, but you know, they all make power better in a certain RPM range. So for instance, the Buell's what I would call its power band because it made the most power between four and 5,000 RPMs. It made it gobs of power. It was noticeable gobs of power between those RPM ranges. Inline fours make their power, 
you know, from the mid-range on up to their higher RPMs. And this bike, being a V4, makes power when the VTEC kicks in at about 7,000 all the way up to 12. So, um, they all have a power band, but some twins don't have a power band. Some V-twins, well, they just pull linear all the way up through. I'll give you, for instance, was my RC51. Um, that bike just pulled constantly all the way through. And if you knew how to, you, the problem is with those bikes is you have to know um, where to be in the RPM range so you don't run out of gear. So, because they don't rev high. But if you know your bike, man, I used to whoop up on a lot of bikes with that. Well, unsuspecting people going, oh, it's a V-twin, it makes power down low, it can't beat me. You'd be surprised if you knew when to shift and how to keep that bike right where its maximum torque was, how fast that bike really was. Um, this one is 7,000 and it comes on hard. Now, another thing that I want to elaborate on on this bike, you guys are following this bike, told you I disconnected the uh, flap the flap on the airbox and while it does have a better exhaust note down low here's the thing it affects the cold start or even just your start in general it affects your starting of this bike in other words with it connected and that flap closed you'll get a quicker start because well the ECU's tuned for that so you get a quicker start when you hit the button than you do with it open. Now, does that mean it doesn't start? No, it just means it's not as efficient as starting. Now, as far as the beautiful noise that it makes with it, with it constantly, you know, open, uh, with the airbox getting all the air it can. Yeah, it's beautiful. And once the bike's going down the road, I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna assume, and this is an assumption, okay? Because I, it's making no seat of the pants difference in horsepower or torque, that's for sure. But I'm gonna assume that as far as it running and being optimal, that this bike is programmed for that flap to be there. So we're probably gonna hook that back up. Sure, it sounds fantastic. It sounds better at the lower RPM range. But the flap is made to be shut for emissions um, when you start the bike. So I think it should be hooked up since the ECU is actually set for that. Now, if we had a power commander, it might be a different story, but we don't. Um, that's why I'm not going to a K&N filter with this either because, well, that would just, you know, defeat the purpose um, until, until we put a power commander on it. Now, am I gonna put a power commander on it? I, I never say never. But the bike has plenty of balls without it. It's not a leader bike. Um, it'll keep up with, you know, it's just it'll keep up with anything. Um, you know, not if we're outright racing, of course not. But it is a quick bike and man, it does surprise a lot of people. Man, this thing pulls the wheel up so easy now. Wow. I mean, the roll-on wheelies in this bike now are simply incredible without even on demand, without trying. So what do you think, guys? Well worth it, right? What a what a beautiful machine. So it's just beautiful. I love it. Something, if you ever get a chance to jump on a nice VFR 800 and take it for a ride, and man, do it because they're so glassy smooth and Beautiful power, beautiful power. Handle nice. No stalling issues now, which is wonderful. Wheelies on demand. And just tons of speed, I mean, can't really get on it down through here. This is the hill I always talk about. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but right here and down you go. You go flying airborne. You're gonna you're gonna become a ballistic missile if you hit that at any speed. This is a nice, uh, dangerous road. <laughs> a little rough, but.
looks nice. This bike's got so much power to zip in and out of any situation, really. A little on the heavy side, though. A little on the heavy side. Let's get on it a little bit here. Watch that speedometer climb. Yeah, this bike is definitely a screamer without even trying you're in triple digits and it's just like glass it really is so much better than it was before nice little jaunt around town here real quick Check our clock. 102. We have the driveway being sealed at the house between 2 and 3, so I'm not going to spend too much time around here, but I love that this thing, I don't have to worry about it stalling now. That's amazing. Because that really sucked. This is a. Uh, up here is the uh, little circle that heads up to Thompson Park. episode where we it is story time with rev with mike <laughs> so we're going to talk about something very very funny that happened to myself and my wife the other day we were right my wife has never ever had the nerve to get on a motorcycle ever she just never has she's never wanted to she doesn't like them she's always scared of them and i've reassured her honey come on I've been on motorcycles for close to, close to 50 years. <laughs> um, I assure you, you're totally safe. Let's go for a ride. She said no. A few weeks later, she said, Mike, I think I'm ready for that ride. So, of course, we don't want to scare the hell out of her on her first outing on a on a motorcycle, let alone a motorcycle that's a little more sport oriented and not super comfortable for a passenger. So we got on the motorcycle and we proceeded to leave the driveway, head down the road a little ways into my village of Carthage. And um, I had a guy on a trendy scooter as we're driving down the road run a red light and pull right out in front of me. Yeah, he's got his full face helmet on, on his little trendy scooter. You know, those scooters, they do 35 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour. Trendy scooter. So I'm like, I had to lock up the brakes in, and on these bikes, I'm a, I'm a bigger guy, and, and my wife's on the back, and we're doing the speed limit, and I'm locking up the brakes, and these handle a little different when you have a passenger, right? So trying to make it so she's not overwhelmed her helmet smashes off the back of my helmet lock it, I mean I lock, I had to lock him up would have hit him so anyhow um he's in front of me and I go to go around him he's on the side of the road now no that way it's that way there he's um wow one way street he's going the wrong way um but this is what I'm talking about. Stuff like this. This is my life. I have to deal with stuff like this every day around. This is the weirdest fucking area. Like, it's like retard capital of the world around here. Um, so this guy's on the right-hand side of the road. And what's he do? What does he do as I'm going around him? He does the same thing again. Pulls in the middle of the road. I lock, almost lock him up again. So I went around him this time. I said, get the fuck out of the middle of the road, ass clown. That's what I said. So I opened my shield. I said, Audrey, I'm pulling over up here. I don't want to be on the same road as this guy. He's in the middle of town. He's still, he's behind us now. I said, let's just get off the bike until this guy's out of the area. Um, smart thing to do. 
So we get off the bike, I get off the bike, take my helmet off, it's hot, we pull over the side of the road, parked spot, kind of near a crosswalk. My wife gets off the bike and I'm standing there, he pulls up next to me, slams on his brakes on his trendy scooter. Right next to me, locks him up. I mean, he's right next to my motorcycle. Slams him up, throws his scooter in the middle of the road and it approaches me very aggressively. Now I'm against my motorcycle, I have nowhere to go. My wife's on the other side, so he approached me. So as a rational man, what do you do when someone aggresses you like that? What do you do? I mean, rationally, what do you do? Are you, am I gonna let him push me back into my motorcycle, tip over my motorcycle? I'm gonna let the bike tip over on my wife. Am I gonna allow myself to be assaulted? No. So what I did is I took my right hand and I cuffed him right upside the helmet. And um, yeah, so apparently, I cuffed him so hard it knocked him down in the middle of the street and uh, he gets up and he yells he gets up and he yells I'm calling the cops I said well you do what you gotta do I ain't going nowhere I'm still not angry I'm just not letting you rush me or aggress towards me so he's so disoriented that he doesn't know where he is and cars are backed up each way. His trendy scooter's laying there in the middle of the road where he threw it. And I said, well, I'm gonna move your scooter out of the way so these cars can get by. So I, I moved his scooter out of the way and proceeded to wait for the police to show up. And the police showed up. The village police showed up. State police showed up. And I believe a sheriff showed up. The village cop walks up to me and he says, well, what happened? I said, well, why don't you get his statement first? Cause he's very aggravated over there. And, and um, and then when you're when you're ready for me, just come talk to me. Get him out of the way because he's gonna he's definitely gonna give you a hard time. So just what I said happened, happened. This guy, he's pissed. Oh, he broke my helmet and blah blah blah. The cop says, "What? What? Would you stop for? Why did you slam on your brakes and stop and approach this man? Oh, because he told me to get out of the road. Okay." So this is the fucked up part. A couple days later, well, the cops go, okay, you are you can go. You don't have to deal with any of this. This guy's been in trouble before. Um, you don't have to deal with any of this. And I said, did he approach you after that? I said, no, I think that that uh, made him learn not to, not to aggress towards somebody anymore. I didn't lie. Sure, I cuffed him upside the helmet. Sure did. I could have hit his body. I could have gave him a rib shot, broke his ribs, right? But I didn't. I said the helmet would be the safest place just to just to um, make him go away, right? And I know that I'm not going to be messed with. So, a few days later, village cop pulls up and he says, well, apparently this kid, I guess this 20-some-year-old kid still lives with mommy. That's what they said. And uh, mommy wants to he wants press his pressing charges. I said, pressing charges for, for what? For defending myself? But okay. But well, the cop says, I don't want to. Um, because, you know, we got your statement, we know exactly what happened, and uh, we don't even think the court's going to hear this case. But anyhow, he says, just in case they do, just be, you know, whatever. So I have this thing hanging over my head where I have somebody aggressed towards me, no place to go, literally less than a uh, forearm's length away from me aggressing me, and I have to deal with this shit. So I've learned a valuable lesson in all this. Never, never do the right thing. Instead, make it count, level them, take them out. If you're gonna do it next time, they're going in the hospital. It's going in the hospital. I'm not gonna take it easy next time. No, if I'm gonna get in trouble, I'm going to get in trouble. So let that be them. We're in New York, so you know it's it's there, there's no there's literally nothing else I could have done in that situation. The guy was obviously not coming up to me to play patty cake with me. He was aggressing me. He didn't slam his brakes, throw his scooter on the ground to say, "Hey, man, you want to play a game of Monopoly?" He was coming up to throw down, and I had no place to go. I couldn't retreat. I couldn't back up. And it wasn't even a case of standing my ground. I, I had no other choice but to stand my ground. I had a motorcycle behind me, directly behind me. <laughs> so that's my story. This is the kind of crazy, crazy people. So it's, it's a case where a guy got his bell rung with his helmet on, didn't like it, calls the cops over something that he initiated and did. This is the kind of world we live in now. 
and it's ridiculous. So would I do the same thing again? 100%, except next time I would really make it count. Because, well, I guess maybe he would have maybe learned a more valuable lesson if I really made it count. You know, Kafuja say, pain is the best teacher. So if I can be a good teacher, I guess that would make me a good person. <laughs> All right, guys, I need, we're gonna end this video. Why don't you guys do me a favor, big solid, do me a big solid, hit like, subscribe, man. It doesn't cost you nothing, and who knows, we might have some really, really cool content coming out soon to make you guys appreciate what I do here. This is gonna be fun. Join me on this journey, on this motorcycle journey, on this new channel, and let's have fun together. Enjoy the real world and have fun and listen to me bitch, piss, and moan, but also have a lot of fun. And I want you guys to know, as always, you guys rock and keep the rubber to the road. Because you know what? You deserve to be alive, man. Peace out, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.